Hello everyone, it's the 1st of April 2016, April Fool's Day. It's just coming up to 6 o'clock here in the UK. My name is Michael, I'm a supply and demand trader. Um, and I've um, decided recently to start posting videos of my um, analysis and trades on YouTube to help um, other traders aspiring um, to understand and profit from the forex market. Um, I really decided to start doing it because of the number of questions um, that I started getting from um, a lot of readers of my entries on um, Forex Factory, the supply and demand thread started by Alfonso Moreno. Um, I hope this information helps people. As you can see in front of you, it's the Forex, um, Forex Risk Disclaimer, <laughs> can't speak. Um, but yeah, understand that Forex is risky and you could lose all your money. Um, learn, put to practice what you learn, and hopefully you'll profit. Um, so I'm going to be posting my analysis. Um, this I intend it to be a frequent thing, um, and I hope it helps, as, as I said. Um, any questions, obviously, um, I'm on the Forex Factory um, thread, and I'll be looking and checking for any questions also in the comment section. Um, I'm, I'm not um, saying or advocating that I'm a guru um, or, or know everything there is to know about supply and demand trading or even the forex markets. I'm a retail trader like uh, most of you, if not all of you. Um, but I've, this is something that I have become extremely good at and, and hopefully I can help people like I was helped coming up. Okay, so let's go to the juicy bits, the charts. Okay, this is my usual layout. Um, this is what I look at. Um, on the top right hand side, you have the monthly chart, the middle chart is the weekly chart, and the daily chart is the chart that I tend to look at for my entries. Um, the bottom left is what I call my dark charts, which um, help me with setting stop losses. Um, more on that in future videos, obviously. And then I have my refining time frames, the four hour and the three hour charts. To the far right, you have um, the list of markets that I look at. Um, you, in alphabetical order, I always start with the dollar index, um, the big daddy as I call it. And um, we just go through them. I have some indexes in there as well, um, and some, uh, some oil um, charts as well. So this platform is TradingView, it's, it's a free, um, application um, there I, I have no affiliations to them they're extremely good in, in, in what I've seen I found this website and I I've been in love with it since um, it's really really good and you don't need to pay for any other platforms if you have this obviously you can't trade straight from it you will have to get your own um, broker but in terms of charting um, I think this is pretty much as good as it gets um, okay so let's start with the analysis. As always, I always start with the monthly chart and I'm looking for a few things on each chart. Um, I do pretty much the same thing on each chart. I look for the trend, I look for the supply and demand zones. So this is my curve time frame. For those of you who don't know what that is, I'm more than happy to, um, to train you on that, to help you on that, to give you information on that. Um, I, I have a lot of descriptions on the Forex Factory um, thread about it. So starting with the curve chart, I want to determine trend. So I'm looking supply zones are being created and respected. Demand zones are being taken out. We are in a downtrend at the moment, obviously. And price is into this area, which is a previously tested demand zone. You see when price came down to this area, it, it had a significant rally. And since this was created in 2008, believe it or not, and we still, you know, eight years on, we haven't um, been able to break that area. Price is back into that area now. Um, and and we, have, we are yet to break it, as I said. So this area has been tested before you'll see here that this was the first test it came really 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 close here as well and now we have this lip 
you can say, the second test. It's gone deeper in, as we would expect, because all this demand has been eaten up by this first test, rallied up all the way as high as here, and it's fallen back down. So downtrend, we don't we have fresh supply above, as you can see, looking up and left. Fresh supply above, right there. Um, this is an area where I would be very interested in selling the British pound and buying some US dollars. Um, that area is fresh, yet to be tested again. But we don't have any fresh demand below. Now, what that tells me, just to take these lines out so it, it doesn't confuse anyone, um, this is not a fresh zone because of this retest. This is the second test in. In, in our curve time frame, we only use um, fresh zones. So we are not in a fresh zone. By definition, therefore, the British pound is in the equilibrium area. Again, that's a term supply and demand traders use to help them decide um, where price is relative to the big time frame supply and demand levels. So price is in equilibrium. Our decision matrix tells us that in equilibrium, the only thing we can do is follow the trend. There is the possibility of buying and selling. The higher probability trade, though, is to follow the trend. My trend chart, being a position trader, is my weekly chart. Now, the weekly trend, obviously, is down, as you can see. Again, supply zone being created and respected, created, respected, all the way down. That's not even been tested yet. Price is currently doing battle with this supply zone. Remember from the monthly chart, our curve time frame, we are in equilibrium. Plan from the decision matrix is follow the trend. The trend is down. This is a short all day, every day, all the time. So this area was our supply zone on the weekly that we would be looking to short at. Now the weekly zone is obviously a large zone. I dare say most people, we don't have an account size large enough to just place a stop above here and take the trade. Um, so we would go down to our entry time frame, which is our third time frame, to look for um, shorting opportunities. Now the first shorting opportunity came, this is, this is the weekly area when you look at it um, refined on the daily time frame. That was the first shorting opportunity. So we're into the weekly area. This is, as I said, the weekly area looked at from the daily lens. That was the first shorting opportunity right there. You probably would have made, say, a two to one um, if you'd taken that first trade as a set and forget. Um, I wasn't paying attention. I missed that trade. And if you look here, it was, it was a really good trade because you also had this what we call a level on top of a level, which is a supply zone with another supply zone hidden behind it. Price had to travel through this area. You'll see what happened when price was reaching that area, it was beginning to stall. Um, and so to get to this supply zone, price had to really fight the sellers. The buyers had to fight the sellers in this zone. They got there, but they were knackered, totally tired out, and price fell first trade. Price went back into that zone. Remember, this is the weekly zone. This is a daily supply zone embedded inside the weekly supply zone. Price made a second attempt, got deeper into it as we would expect because of the first retest. Some um, sell orders were filled. More sell orders will be left over. And we went further in. Now, look at the trend on the daily chart. If you reuse as we do our trend lines, the trend on the daily chart was broken by this little candle here, this little one with the open, high, low, and close away from the trend line. Not this one, not that one, even though they both closed below, it was this third one that broke that trend line. And by definition,
definition, the zone that broke the trend line is this, and this is our supply zone. So just moving the lines over so it, it, people can see what I'm talking about clearly, that is our supply zone. Let's take out all these to make clean up a chart. I always like clean charts. Um, so that is the supply zone. The only downside to that supply zone was the when price left that zone, I was looking for it to make a lower low than this. That this low here is um, 1.4052, and the low the price made from when it left that supply zone was 1.4057. So about five pips difference didn't make it all the way lower, but a supply zone nonetheless. Why? Because as we said, it broke the trend line. It's a supply zone in the bigger picture daily supply zone area, in the bigger picture weekly supply zone area. It's a short all the time. Price came back into that zone um, three days ago, two days ago now, and um, I missed that first trade because I, ju I just wasn't paying attention really. Um, but that was the set and forget short in that area which would be selling at the proximal line here. And you're still in the trade if you took that first trade. Because I missed that trade, uh, and knowing my what uh, how we, we perform supply and demand, I went down to my refining time frames to look at that um, supply zone closely. And I found this. This was yesterday morning, the 31st of March. I found this supply zone um, right here. Very early in the morning I found it and I knew that um, look, after I finish my analysis as I always do then I go and look at the calendar. I don't look at the calendar first and then do my analysis. I look at the calendar after I've done my analysis. Um, not that I use a calendar for anything, it's just to know what is ahead in terms of fundamental news. I don't trade the news, I don't really care about the news because it's supply and demand that moves the markets. The news will follow and make what was going to happen just happen quicker. So I found that zone, I set my trade, used my dark charts to help me with where to put my stop loss. I think it ended up being a 56 tick um, stop loss in total from entry to stop. And we are where we are now. So I'm in this trade short first targets are around here somewhere and the last targets are, are down here. Um, we'll see what happens um, but that that's how I do my top-down analysis. This is for the British pound US dollar the 1st of April, April Fool's Day. <laughs> Interesting day to start posting charts isn't it? Okay so that's AKT done. Um, I hope to be posting more of these, as I said, and also on, on Twitter as well. So that's, that's that. Okay. Any questions, please use the comment box or hit me up on Forex Factory, um, Supply and Demand in a Nutshell thread. Thanks to Alfonso Moreno for starting that thread um, and, and, and working so hard on it. Really, really good. A great man. Okay. Thank you all very much. I hope this information is useful as to the way I look at the charts. Um, yeah. All right. Take care, everyone. All the best.